it says here, she is one of my wish professors I had when I in envisioned this program once, when I thought if I had a chance to do a university the way a university should be done, whom would I invite there to be with us? And Donna was the first of my list for American professors because she's such, <laughs> such a rare bird, such a rare bird. <laughs> you know, you know all, all American professors. Uh, and you know how easily they adapt to their environment and how easily they praise their standards and are happy when they just do a little bit different things. She <laughs> never did anything like that. She was always different, always not like the others. She was the other in her program. So she's a genuine thinker, I would say. And what I most like about her is not only that she crosses boundaries and does totally new stuff nobody has ever thought about, but also that she kept her personal convictions. She's still a feminist, still a, I don't know, Marxist, at least a leftist, you know, but she was never one be trusted by the doctrinaires of the field, you know, I can know a lot of people who would say, this woman is a Marxist, no way. No know. way, right. <laughs> I've this, been told that. And <laughs> this no way is her badge of honor, you know, because she still is, because she's not in terms of any doctrine, but in terms of what this was the whole thing about, uh, in terms of what, uh, yes, is important in Marxism, etc. So I'm very happy to present her tonight, and we hopefully have a great discussion, especially the students who are not uh, in her class should feel inclined to ask her questions because this may be your only opportunity. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here, and um, this is something I wanted to do and was not able to do last year, and so I felt very honored. Uh, when Wolfgang renewed the invitation. So uh, thank you for having me, and it's been a lot of fun. The, the title of the lecture tonight uh, is in honor of my debt to uh, Michel Foucault, and so it's called Birth of the Kennel, um, Cyborgs, Dogs, and Companion Species. Uh, it is in uh, light of my debts as a child who grew up with the milk of Darwin, Freud, and genetically engineered organisms and transgenic elements such as plutonium. Uh, I read this lecture in terms of my family, my sibling set, uh, the milk of my mother's Darwin, Foucault, and Oncomouse. Uh, so that this is an inquiry uh, into what I'm calling, uh, borrowing the term from Helen Veron, an Australian philosopher, philosopher of science who has recently written a really quite wonderful book on African logics and science, uh, number systems among Yoruba-speaking school children. Wonderful book. Uh, Helen is using the term emergent ontologies in ways I'm finding very fruitful for thinking about technoscience and thinking about the kinds of figures around which I organize my work. Uh, as a person cursed and blessed with a sacramental consciousness and the indelible mark of having grown up as an Irish Catholic, uh, in the United States, a kind of indelible uh, understanding that the sign is the thing in itself, the, the implosion of the sign and substance that is part of being cursed and blessed with a sacramental consciousness. Uh, the literalness of metaphor, the materiality of trope, the tropic quality of materiality, the implosion of semioticity and materiality always simply seemed the case about the world as opposed to a particularly fancy theoretical insight or, or mistake. It, it simply seemed the air we breathe, um, the irreducible semioticity of materiality and uh, vice versa. Figuration uh, as something also inherited out of that same tradition, uh, as taking figures as those who collect up and reflect back the hopes of a people. Figures uh, are about collective yearning figurations somehow collect up and give back a sense of the possibility of fulfillment or the possibility of damnation or the possibility of some kind of collective 
uh, inclusion in figures larger than that to which they explicitly refer. So that I borrow from, I have borrowed for many years from Erich Auerbach's great work on mimesis, written, of course, during the conditions of the war without his library, uh, which is itself a wonderful, ironic uh, commentary on uh, the commentary on the history of literature. Um, I feel, uh, uh, I have always <coughs> felt very um, indebted to Auerbach's conception of mimesis uh, and the uh, turn in Western literature and philosophy whereby um, the, uh, the figure and the reference somehow become confused with each other in a way that, that um, uh, has informed the history of, of our thought, I think, for m several hundred years, and the difference of that from classical thought, either of Greek or Hebrew varieties. Um, so that, in a sense, my genealogy of cyborgs, as well as my post-cyborg entities that I'm calling companion species, otherwise known as dogs, uh, <laughs> in the vernacular, uh, <laughs> the, um, my, uh, figure, my, my genealogy includes uh, this kind of appreciation of figuration that I learn uh, out of both literature and philosophy, as well as this history of growing up as a girl um, in the American Catholic Church. Now, um, I, for better and for worse, uh, got known for an article written in the early 1980s on my first computer, an old HP 86, called a Manifesto for Cyborgs, or the Cyborg Manifesto after uh, the Communist Manifesto as a call to action. Uh, it was a um, joke in a way. I was given five pages by a uh, socialist review among a group of other socialist feminists to write about what we thought the future of socialist feminism would be in the 1980s after the election of a right-wing president and the uh, growing ascendancy of neoliberalism uh, signed by you know, Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher and many others. And the, the paper exceeded five pages by quite a bit and was loved by the West Coast Socialist Review Collective and hated by the East Coast Socialist Review Collective, who really did not ever want to publish it. Um, it's had a distressing half-life, the cyborg figure, uh, and has been used to mean almost anything about the join between human and machine in some kind of uh, deeply ahistorical way that I find uh, maddening. And so I want to remind me and us about the, the historical specificity of the cyborg figure as well as the material project of the cyborg. But let me begin with a slide that is particularly about this audience because I have discovered that this audience is particular savvy, uh, particularly savvy in uh, computer-mediated communications practices of various kinds. A lot of people here do film, video, web design. A lot of people here are involved in various kinds of inventing careers in the margins of and in the centers of various kinds of commercial operations, interdigitating with academic uh, work and, and deep philosophical inquiry. People here are inside the material semioticity of informatics, by and large, including a strong emphasis on visual culture. Now, as a person who has recently gone to the dogs, uh, I begin with, um, let me see how many lights we can get away. Well, uh, I will walk <laughs> back and forth. No, uh, between the light and the You can walk back. Yeah, good. I think that might be the difference between German and American, or uh, never mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> Male and female, no. <laughs> Simply knowing how to run the world. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a convention of dogs. Um, and the dog is a toy dog, a lap dog. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the enemy. <laughs> This is a meeting of the American Association of Lap Dogs. <laughs> okay, now, I feel a little bit like that dog uh, in the face of, these, uh, of an audience who is sophisticated in philosophy and in media studies and communications. I feel a bit like the toy lap dog uh, giving you uh, this particular version. So let me have the next slide, if I could. And this is to remind all of us of the specificity of the cyborg figure. This creature is named HAM. It's an acronym for Holloman Aeromedical uh, Facility, where HAM, a child captive out of Africa, uh, is raised in the space program, specifically as a surrogate for man in the race for space. All of that language taken out of the Mercury Project in which HAM was a participant. HAM is one of the first um, advanced primates in space. 